All right, so it is, what is that, hair? It is, uh, what morning are we on? Thursday morning. Dude, this week has got away from me, man. Like, we were supposed to be, I felt like we were supposed to be in, like, primer with this thing by Thursday morning, at least the body. But, I mean, it just takes a lot of time, dude. Paint body work takes a lot of time. So, that's why, like, when you, when you set yourself a deadline or you say you have a deadline, um, it seems very doable. Like, oh, you're like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I got construction speed square this morning. Um, you're like, yeah, I can, I can make that. I can do that. But then when you start doing it, I mean, you're just, dude, you're sanding for hours sometimes. And then, like, the day is gone. I mean, it's just, it's so much work. It's time consuming. So we're going to dive right into this thing this morning. I got two cars to paint today, but the good news is that I don't have to do anything but spray them. So Eddie prepped them yesterday. He's taping them, uh, putting them in the booth. He's taping one up in the booth right now. And all I got to do is walk in and shoot them and then walk right back out and start slinging on this. So we're gonna start this morning. We're gonna check these, uh, this cow panel out just to make sure uh, our, our edges, that's what I got to square for, make sure all of our edges are flat right here. We're gonna make sure our edge is flat down there on the other end, make sure the ones this way like this are flat. Just make sure everything around the edges are flat and then re-skim coat this one. We gotta sand out that one up there, re-skim coat a couple of, uh, dents and dings and then I guess I might move on to fitting the hood even though I really don't want to I kind of want to get the shell in primer and get it uh, you know some paint on it focus on that but the bad thing is if I take all this apart to get the shell and primer and everything then the next opportunity I'll have to fit this hood the Zeus fasteners and everything would be on the reassemble and we don't want that. So we kind of want to at least go ahead and just get all of our cuts right, put at least four Zeus fasteners in, one in each corner. Um, and that way we know our fitment's good and then we can then we can finally move on to breaking this thing down and getting this thing together. So I'm gonna take my broke uh, speed square and check my edges around my cowl and then get back to sanding this morning, I guess, and move on to fitting this, uh, finish fitting this hood. So. Let's ride. All right, so this is all we wanted to check for is to come across here and just make sure our square don't have no rocking in it for uh, like this, which it doesn't. Just make sure that that cow panel is not uh, humped up. You know your edges around here are straight, so your center can you know is going to be a little wavy. So that's what we are blocking out. Um, this side, uh, we still got a little wobble. Let's smack that one more time just hit that one and it seemed decent so that's all you're doing you're not I mean you're not like going crazy don't go crazy on this so now a little bit right there in the center and yes you probably should do this before you do body filler I just there we go so now now we don't have no play now it's just nice and solid I noticed it yesterday when I was sanding that basically what the dead giveaway was that I needed to check something was how metal showing right there which we went over in other videos that means that's a high spot um, and then on this side when I hit this all of that metal is hitting so that means that's a high spot so it means it either was curved like this or it was ramped up like that so uh, I felt the sander grabbing it um, all of this right here is fine because that's the cut at the same plane basically it's just different when you have something that's stepped out that wide then that's a gradual step out like a fade which is what you want basically not just you know this little tiny strip hitting you know both sides it was little tiny strips so that means it's a real aggressive high piece that it was riding on top of not a gradual step out so that was a dead giveaway that i just needed to check in sure enough they needed to be bumped down a little um, if you ever have to do something like that and readjust something or straighten out a panel after you've already started your filler if it's anything actual aggressive that was not that was just lightly tapping the edges but if it's actually anything worth a crap then you're probably going to have to grind the body filler out in that area and re-skim it because you'll crack the body filler and you'll I mean you'll see the cracks clear as day it's not like you can miss it you'll see the cracks if it splits from the bottom it's going to it's going to crack through it um from all the experience i've had on working on that guy over there so and we've done some pretty crazy stuff on there 
but yeah, I'm gonna get to uh, sanding all the rest of that out, reskim that, reskim them dents this morning, and uh, get going on this bad boy. Feel like I'm gonna blow up again. I just got done with lunch. Um, there's not gonna be a ton to film on this stuff right now. I'm not gonna bore y'all with time lapse. We have a lot of content to get out, and uh, do my eyes are like blinded from being out here, being in the office watching YouTube, and then you come out here after lunch, and it's like the sun is blinding. But anyway. Um, we're gonna have a ton of content over the next week or two trying to keep the uh, fox body stuff out and up to date teach y'all some stuff with the paint and body work on that side and then i already have like uh one comment update video done and we're filming on the second one so i double dumped videos yesterday because i didn't want to get behind that's what happens um but just stick with us man there's a lot of content we are in like overtime right now so right before i went to lunch we got this quarter panel sand it all out got us some dents down there that's where the black is left this is basically god coat so you can see now how it makes sense that these are uh dents the outer edge is not as deep as the center is of course so we need to get a swipe of body filler through here there's a little tiny uh dimple right here there's that's nothing uh so we need to address these with some body filler and keep moving down to quarters all of this is good car's decently pretty straight there's not too many not too many dents we re-skimmed out like that like ah we re-skimmed that out like we said re-skimmed that out re-skimmed that out i did a messy swipe on that one so i got to clean all that up and now we are going to move on over to this quarter get this all uh sanded out it is what's today thursday tomorrow we're only open 8 to 11 so i'm really trying and praying that i can have this shell and primer uh by 11 o'clock tomorrow on friday but i don't know if it's going to happen because this hood's going to slow me down this hood is going to really slow me down because i need to fit it and get it fitted before i take all this apart like i said so i'm going to keep on sanding i'm not going to roll a lot of time lapse today because it's literally just going to be sanding but once we start doing something interesting then i'll pick y'all back up Look, I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it. And I've been sanding pretty much all day long, man. Got some progress made on the body. So we're about to pull these side moldings. So what I'm gonna do to pull these side moldings, if any of y'all wondering, it should be double-sided taped behind it. So we are gonna take this uh, spreader we are going to get it in here and just start stabbing it down in there to loosen the double-sided tape up basically if you're doing this on a painted car then what you can do is you can actually heat this thing up even if you're doing it on a non-painted car heating it up makes the makes everything a lot easier but i'm just going to roll like this so i'm going to just keep stabbing this in there which cuts the uh Double sided tape, and then I'm gonna work it through the bottom, get it loose, and then pull it off. Another thing you can do is once you get your top pulled back, so I got my top pulled back, let's see if I can do this. So once you get your top pulled back, got it all loosened, I'm gonna go on the bottom, let's see if I can do this one handed, and we're gonna open the bottom up. And we're going to just run the razor blade back there. All right, after you get your piece off, that's what it's going to look like. It's going to have double-sided tape strip there, double-sided tape strip there. All I did was work that in there, and then I pulled it back. Once I got the top back, I was able to just take a little razor blade, basically, and peel the top open, and then just run a razor blade gently on the inside. 
of the double side tape to basically just cut it so I cut the bottom like that when you get it off it's going to be a little distorted from pulling on it uh, it's still rubber it's still uh, as you can see it's really flexible so immediately lay it on something flat it needs to be perfectly flat because the heat and gravity is going to lay that thing back out perfectly flat so you don't want to lay it across something because it's literally going to form to whatever you lay it across being it's soft rubber uh, that's how most door moldings or uh, door bumpers are like that so as soon as you get it off lay it across something flat that way you don't mess it up or warp it we're going to get a racer wheel on the drill and we are going to take the rest of that double side tape off and sand that so my racer wheel looks like an easter egg as you can see yours should not look like that it should be nice and round this is from it bouncing off the body and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and now this racer wheel is destroyed but i'll use it so i'm going to get this double side tape off on this side move to the other side get that one off and then i think all we have left is dollying out the wheel wells we got to dolly out the edges uh fill some little dents with some dolphin glaze uh, put dolphin glaze over uh, all of our body work get the tail lights out get the back bumper off get a deck lid off we might leave that on actually until we get done washing um, and then we are getting close to uh, priming this shell the body so we still got to fit the hood so it's probably still going to be monday before we get primer because it is thursday afternoon four o'clock and i still have to do the hood on this guy so we're moving along though making progress this stuff just takes a ton of time we did get the gas door out earlier um got the bucket out of it when we took the moldings off and all that so all right so we are literally like almost there i just spent about one and a half hours on this cowl again cleaning up the details so the details include all the way from this little tiny tray in here and getting it nice and smooth um i took a hammer uh and just tap the edge of this lip just to make sure it was nothing was up in an area all your corners because i ran filler to my corners that way everything looks nice and uh decent by the time you got all this crap from the factory okay we're not worried too much about this uh if you were doing this at your house what i would love to do right now is take seam sealer and run seam sealer which is basically like caulking all the way into this corner and then fade it into here i'd love to do that but time is not on my side um made sure that you know i still got little tiny things to do like this basically you just take your little holes you know and just make sure there's no filler around the edges so stuff like that you know just clean up your little uh edges we miss these two so you do stuff like this just like that that's all you gotta do just make sure you're I mean, I missed all of these, but I was quitting because it is quitting time for today. But stuff like that, just cleaning up all your little holes, making sure these cow panel tops are flat again. I mean, they are freaking flat as glass. They feel amazing. Um, so I definitely got a lot of time into that. So got a lot of um, sanding done on the on the roof. So all of our all of our dents are pretty much in the final stage on the roof and then all of the quarters including down there it had a nasty uh nasty dent down there race wheeled off this side we still got to 180 this little bit of black right here and 180 where the molding was uh dollied out the edges there really wasn't much to do with that these have been cut um up inside here so it's uh kind of a mess you know just i mean it's it's been it's been cut so you can imagine when you cut metal how how it is so it's not not in the world but we're just going to take dolphin glaze and we'll flick some dolphin glaze right around the edge when we do our final over on our dolphin glaze i uh, got the dents worked out of the quarter panels on this side got the dents worked out of the quarter panel on this side there's a pretty good dent there uh, there was a spot down here that had like hit something. It was like a dent like this, a long dent. I was actually going to let it ride because it's just going to get covered right back up again with uh, rubber, but I decided not to. So we actually took the time and slicked all that out, even though it's probably a waste of time because it's just going to get rubber completely caked all over it. Um, 
all of the dents are done so everything's in the final the only thing we need to do now is dolphin glaze dolphin glaze take care of these pinholes all of these freaking pinholes are from um, any professional if any professional comes on the channel in the comments they're gonna say it's from improper mixing of your filler so it basically it's air bubbles inside your filler um, it just creates a little tiny pinhole structurally there's nothing wrong with it uh, you just have to deal with your pinholes so you put dolphin glaze over all that dolphin glaze fills in pinholes so most everybody that does body work gets pinholes uh, every now and then you know you'll have somebody who says they are a body working god goddess and they don't get pinholes so you can tell these don't really have much pinholes at all these don't have no pinholes so i mean some of them you know turn out all right and that one might have been the pinholes might have been from a uh you know me trying to push it and it getting hot and then gassing out so none of that has pinholes and you can tell this is all with 180 it looks like maybe some tiny ones around the edge of that tiny ones around that or that's a dry rotted clear coat underneath there's one or two right there so that's all all that is is if you got little tiny pinholes you know that's stuff like that we've got to go back and get them more that's just a little filler build up on the edge so we'll get all them edges before we prime it but you know there's pinholes in this one so the pinholes can be you know from a couple things but don't sweat it that's what you got your dolphin glaze for uh if you don't know what i'm talking about on dolphin glaze this is the product i use uh we will be slinging this next this is going to be one of our next step so this is the part number and this is what i use this stuff just levels out uh old really good it's ultra fine finishing glaze um it's good stuff i hate doing it because it's like you you feel like you're done and then you got to do it all over again kind of so but it, it works good for like little tiny dents and dings uh because it doesn't it doesn't mix like body filler does per se so the next step is going to be a run around all the edges just make sure they're pretty decent it's not going to be a hundred percent we're just going to rough it all in and then get everything in primer get tail lights off get a bumper off get the whole shell in primer and when we block our primer that is when then we will make sure our edges are 100 percent. that's just how i do it so you technically probably could you know take the piece of advice to make sure everything's 100 percent before primer but on edges like this right here you know i don't really worry about until i have primer laid because uh if you just smooth that stuff out your paint will cover that beautifully like there's no reason to stress yourself over primer work around the edges so primer really is you know work is on your flats that's where you're really going to see you know where you did body work and stuff that's where the primer really counts uh not so much the tiny tiny edge of everything even though one guy's going to tell you different i'm just telling you right now that you don't have to have it 100 percent before you prime so after you prime it needs to be 100 percent before paint but you don't have to stress yourself about inside here you know and the edges and all that because we're going to get that final that will get no primer inside there primer is literally just to cover up body work and to cover up imperfections in the old paint um so that's the reason why basically only flats so it is thursday afternoon five o'clock we're going to get out of here and uh keep this show moving this bumper is still haunting me because the amount of time that that thing is going to take man it's going to be crazy I'm trying to get the body done that way you know trying to knock the big items out so that i'm not overwhelmed with all the little, little items so that's going to be a wrap for today like comment subscribe share and we'll catch you on the next update harper where's the rabbit Go on, I... harper where's the rabbit show me the rabbit Hello. show me where the rabbit's at Say bye-bye to the rabbit. Hey, tell the rabbit bye-bye.